on 22nd. That aligned with several cellular services failing Thursday. Across the country, many AT&T wireless customers woke up to no service this morning, a widespread outage impacting major cities. And now a federal investigation is underway to determine if this was a cyber attack. Eyewitness News reporter Leticia Juarez joins us now live with the latest. Leticia? Yeah, that's right, Philip and Giovanna. They woke up to no calls, no texting, and no internet services on the apps that many of us depend on, especially as we're waking up in the morning. Now, this disruption on the AT&T network service disrupted services from coast to coast. Now, the good news, though, is, is that AT&T says that 75% of its operations are now back online, but the telecommunication company has not yet said what caused the issue. Of course, there are several possibilities that are being floated. Two sources briefed on the situation tell ABC News that the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security are among the agencies urgently investigating to determine if the outage was the result of a cyber attack, a hack, or a technical malfunction. The investigation is of the highest priority given that the critical nature of the company's operations and the fact that the FirstNet first responder network has been in affected by this outage as well. And again, AT&T still has not said what exactly caused this disruption. And as they try to get their services 100% back online, they are telling customers if they can't make a call on the wireless service to go ahead and use Wi-Fi to continue making those calls. Solar flares could potentially be damaging and catastrophic to the world's communication systems. Two strong solar flares happened on February 21st and 22nd. That aligned with several cellular services failing Thursday. The other black swan thing that could come with this and the sense I have about it is they could say, oh, it's a solar flare when really it's some form of this. This has been on my mind. This has been on my mind. And what they really are looking for, a lot of these wicked, nefarious people, they really want to get us into a conflict. They really want that. The reason they want it, the reason they want it is because it'll keep them in power and crisis sells this crisis fatigue. So it's, it's conflict, war, economic stuff. Uh, there could be electronic crisis. Uh, this has been strongly on my heart, electronic crisis with blackouts. I prophesied blackouts a year and a half ago and people are like, don't say that kind of stuff. The truth is, is there's a lot coming about this that we've got to really begin to look at. Now, Jesus is Lord. And when you talk about all this stuff and the concerns that are around it and all this, I've got to tell you today that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not afraid. And here's the hope. Here's the power for all this. Here's the power that's, that's behind all this. That the Lord Jesus Christ is calling us to rise up in great favor and great abundance in all this. And I, I believe pro powerfully in Luke chapter 21, when you're looking at Luke chapter 21, got my beautiful Thompson chain here, by the way. Uh, when EMP, people are asking what that means, that means electromagnetic pulse. They could do that and blackouts would be everywhere. And then they would say that it was the sun or a solar flare and they're gonna talk about that or some existential threat from solar activity. This could come, but they could do that and say, um, it's, it's an electromagnetic pulse. They could do that and say, oh man, the sun is here. Now we got to do this. We all got to go to green energy or whatever the mess they would try to push on us. This, uh, worship of green stuff. They're a bunch of greeny worshipers of green, right? Hear the word of the Lord on this. You're going to see more and more news articles about record solar flares. They're preparing you for something. You're going to see more and more news about solar flares, uh, you know, war, and you're going to hear more about China. But I heard the Lord say he's going to hold back much of that for a moment. And I'm telling you, God is going to break you out of bondage. God's going to break you out of what's going on. The Lord prophesied to us that there would be solar flares that would be happening, or they would say they're solar flares and use it as an excuse for outages. And of course, this goes back to the prophetic word we shared back on September 16th, 2023, uh, when I began to see that, that word about Vegas and what happens in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. And that word has a lot to do with cyber issues, technological attacks, blackouts, brownouts, cell outages, all of this. So you do realize over the last couple of days, 
that one of the cell service providers, AT&T, had a nationwide outage. There's issues going on with that. The other word we've been seeing manifest more and more is the word we've given for the last year about issues with the airlines. And this is something that we're just praying about working through right now. And I've got more to come on that, uh, things that we're seeing with it. And there's a lot of relevance and, and things to consider. Let's get into this eclipse that's coming. It's the Nineveh eclipse. Why is it such a big deal? Well, you realize that on April the 8th, of 2024 there's coming a solar eclipse and it's going to go across really the eastern side of the united states and it's going to be like an x marks the spot and it's the first one in seven years seven years previous to this there was a solar eclipse that went across the united states this one seven years later is now going to release a a path that covers eight cities that are all named get this Nineveh. And I didn't know that. And at the beginning of the year, the Spirit of the Lord prophesied to us during New Year's. And then even before New Year's, we were, we were on Daystar, we were in a couple other places, and the Lord was ministering to me up through the fall. And the word for this year was, America was going to experience a bowing of the knee through either Nineveh or fire. And I didn't realize this eclipse was <laughs> a pathway with eight cities named Nineveh, and eight is the number for new beginnings. So there's a lot with this. Now, I believe the eclipse narrative was seven years that led up to the eclipse. That seven years since the last eclipse, I believe, has a lot to do with the, the hour of Joseph, where Joseph had seven years of preparation. There will be a seven-year narrative, I believe, following that eclipse, that there's going to be a lot of faith to have light in Goshen. In other words, it's going to be like dark in Egypt in many areas and in many ways because things are going to change radically, but it'll be light in Goshen. I believe we're going into that time where Babylon's going to get judged, difficulty's going to happen, and it's going to be light in Goshen. And so I've had this word, again, um, that all these things are taking place. And I'll get to this high-altitude balloon thing over Colorado in just a moment. And then I also want to mention this. I wanted to mention this, you know, give all these words about the Super Bowl, things that are taking place here. But I believe that we are in a do-over season for a variety of reasons. But I believe we get a do-over so you can get another shot at doing it right. It doesn't mean it's going to be the same exact outcome. It means we get to do it again. That being said, that being said, this do-over word, where we're going after you watch, you know, the Super Bowl, all these things. I believe that we are going into overtime a time of overtime that's been a time in America or the nations. It's not just about America, it just happens to be where I live. Uh, but you realize we've been in a season of grace, but we are shifting from a time of grace to an overtime in a do-over season, a time of grace to a time, get this, of mercy. Mercy is where you do not get what you deserve. Why am I saying that it's mercy? Because in 2020, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me while I was on a live broadcast, and I wrote it on the whiteboard that Roe v. Wade would be overturned with an unprecedented ruling. We saw that. We wrote it on the board. That happened then, uh, just a few years later, as you know. And when Roe v. Wade was overturned, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, we're going to go into a time of mercy. So now there's difficulty coming, real difficulty. The cyber stuff is going to be induced. They're going to shout solar flare. You're going to hear this more and more. And we've been seeing this for a year now and saying it right on our live broadcast with date stamps. They're going to say solar flares, solar flares, solar flares. And as the solar flares happen, they're going to say it's solar flares. But my gut instinct, rather the spirit of the Lord really, is saying that it's actually because they're inducing a lot of these issues. Because when I said what is happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas, at the time I had that word on September 16th, I had stepped into a vision of Las Vegas. And I said, what am I doing here? At that exact moment, there was a cyber attack happening. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what is happening here will not stay here. And I believe that's why we're seeing outages, shortages, and a lot more is coming. A lot more is coming. Now, at that same exact word and that same exact vision, on September 16th, the Lord also spoke to me and said, Israel will march in an unprecedented manner against their enemies. And I saw that. And then three weeks later, on the 7th of the following month, it happened. 
it happened. You can go back and look at the actual date stamped live video. You can't go back and make live videos. It was live and many of you remember it. So I see all these things happening. So what does it mean? Well, even as we're here right now, it's a do over. It's a do over. And in another sense, even though it's not a do over exactly of 2020, even though much of this is a do over of 2020, the do over we're seeing right now is a lot like what happened a year ago. Now we're seeing balloons over Colorado, my state, over America's mountain, which is Pikes Peak, America's mountain. So the word of the Lord is, is the red dragon, the lion, the bear, Goliath, or as we've talked about many times, the red dragon, let the reader understand the red dragon is probably sending more of their, you know, weather insights <laughs> over some of our militarized uh, places. And they're getting a little bird's eye view of things. It's a do over. But this time, there's a confrontation to it. This time, the remnant is here, the red church is here, and it's gonna rise up and press back against this. The do-over is coming, and I believe 45 and all the things that he has stood for, the Lord is trying to get him to the finish line to get him back in. It's the way it is. Could something derail it? Yes, but we must pray. I believe the prayers of the saints will avail much, and this is so vital, you guys, so vital. It's so vital. So this seven years that the Lord had, I believe, given us a word and a warning of the first eclipse. Now we're coming to the second one, crossing into X. It's an X on the nation where this intersects. It's an X. Consider it's, they're talking about disease X. Then consider Twitter turned to X. Now we got the X marks the spot right on the nation. And there's many things involving this X scenario, but the Lord is bringing answers to this contention. I was talking with Mario Marilla, Todd Coconado. I was on their awesome program, and I can't wait for that program to air, but I was on there um, doing Firepower <clears throat> with Mario and Todd, and those are two amazing men of God. And I'm on this thing, and we started to talk, and I realized, and Mario and I started to dialogue just for a moment about the coming two years. And I realized we're going to go into this and I see this next year. It's like a year and a half that I believe if 45 does get in, it's going to be nuts. Okay. It's going to be a mess going in and a mess going past and just so much in the air about it. But it's as if there's going to be challenge, challenge. And then I saw a year and a half where they began to kind of right size and wherever all the dust settles and it's going to be a difficult deal. I saw 25 being a year of fire, but I saw the dust settling after about a year and a half, somewhere in there. And then I saw the next two years. And Mario was talking about the next two years where the Lord's extending this time of mercy, even though it's going to get wild, but it's a time of mercy, no matter how bad it gets, a time of mercy for things to begin to right size or to open the door. And I believe a lot of it is tied to the federal decision of Roe v. Wade. I believe a lot of it is tied to those things. And the Lord is bringing answers. Listen, you don't have to be afraid of this thug demon spirit because we could see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What if, what if, just like Nineveh, the impossible turnaround, we get an extended season of grace and mercy for another generation? Well, it really could be. But we gotta pray, we gotta act, we gotta stand up to this wicked demon lizard overlord agenda. And the Lord's calling you. The Lord's calling you higher. It's your time. One year ago, January, I was in a meeting and the Spirit Lord spoke to me. Spoke to me, and I mean spoke to me. There's prophetic ministry happening. The word of the Lord came across the auditorium I was in, hit me and said, come up higher. Come up where I am, Joseph. I'm gonna show you things to come. And I had to go to Revelation chapter four and pray that through. What does this mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? It has a lot to do with media. Yesterday, if you remember, there was a fire cascading across the plains going towards a nuclear base in Texas. This nuclear base was about to be engulfed in flames. And I mean, who knows what that could have led to? I mean, we might've been looking at our own potential um, Chernobyl 
It could have been something absolutely terrible that was about to take place. And instead, we put out that breaking now report where we do that periodically. If there's something that needs to be said or there's news taking place or something we need to pray about or prophetically look at, and we, we hit our text to join list and everybody jumped on and we were able to get together and Clay Clark and I were on and shared, this is coming. This, this fire is a mile away from the nuclear base in Texas and we prayed. I prayed, our partners are praying, everybody's praying. And last night I found out, because I got a message from my friend, Pastor Brian Gibson, that they were interceding as a church. And guess what happened? A snowstorm came in, into Texas, and it hit that fire. And it, see, uh, there's Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak, America's mountain. And suddenly the fire was extinguished. The fire is extinguished. And I was so grateful to hear that from Pastor Brian. And you're looking at all that's going on. I'm telling you the prayers of the righteous avail much. So here's the word of the Lord in this. Listen to me. The word of the Lord is that there is still the remnant that's praying and altering this narrative. And it gives me hope for this nation. That looked really bad. <clears throat> Enough for us to go live about it and put out a broadcast. And now was it induced by uh, the powers that be? Probably. But you know what? I believe God answered with a snowstorm. They came with fire. God came with ice. <laughs> and here's the thing. I believe that it was stopped. Now, I feel a prophetic word in this, a strong one, that America shall be saved, that this nation is going to go through some hard times. There's going to be a lot of difficulty, a lot of smoke, a lot of fire, a lot of challenges. But at the end of the day, the prayers of the righteous avail much. And that is the word. That's the watchword right now. We're about to come into this solar eclipse on April 8th, where the, the X marks the spot. Your Charisma magazine just put out an article that we, we were sharing. I'm so grateful to the Lord, uh, you know, that he's so graciously speaking to us. And, and I'm just sharing only what I see. And I got to tell you, I believe that we're on the cusp of a collision. But in the middle of this collision, difficulty, difficulty, smoke, fire, all of it. But the Lord will come. He will come to us like sweet spring rain. I'm telling you, the rains are coming. The goodness of God, the snow is coming. Victory is coming. We averted a major disaster. We got around it. Uh, just yesterday by prayer. I know it was by prayer. So we give all the glory to Jesus, all the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the great God of heaven, that this did not turn into a major monumental disaster on American soil. I believe it's a type and a shadow of what's to come. I believe there's more, more breakthrough coming. I believe God is sending intervention. The word is intervention. In the United States, intervention in the nations, and intervention around the world. God is on the throne. And I'll tell you, we need to keep praying. We need to keep standing. We need to keep arising and shining for the light of God is coming. And let me just tell you something right now. You are not the minority. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're the majority. We're the ecclesia. We're the red church, the blood-bought believers. Man, God is with you. I want to thank our partners for helping us get the word out. I believe we tipped it along with Pastor Brian Gibson and many others like us. We were able to tip it by prayer, and it's partners like you that help us do these things and begin to bring a watchman now word, that sons of Issachar anointing. Here we are. Thank you for being our partners. Thank you for standing with us. Please go to josephz.com. We need your help. Please partner today. You'll hear from us. You'll, we'll call you, and we will call you regularly, actually, and stand with you. I love you. Jesus is Lord. Repost this everywhere because it's time to celebrate that we saw a victory, a monumental victory in the face of impending issues, darkness, Jesus is Lord. Listen to me. God is with you. This is your time. This is your hour. This is the hour that we've been waiting for. We're coming into this valley of decision. One quick word on this eclipse. It's coming April the 8th. It's a sign. It's a wonder. I believe the seven years leading up to it is one season. We're about to go into another seven-year cycle. And I believe it's going to be fire, collision. But listen to me. It was dark in Egypt, but it is light in Goshen. The devil may come walking over in your life, but he's going to go limping back. He's going to go limping back. Darkness doesn't stand a chance against the ecclesia, against you. It's time to rise and shine. I hope you'll partner with us. I really do. JosephZ.com, please partner with us. We need you. We're going to get after this. The Lord is with you. This is the hour of visitation. Okay, so tell me what... What's some of the latest, like within the last month, the Lord's been showing you? I had this word about the Kansas City Chiefs, the 49ers, yeah. and the Lord began to tell me this is a do-over. 2020 was one thing. 2024 is a do-over from 2020. Wow. 
And I believe that the Super Bowl uh, is, is a sign and a wonder. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we don't make doctrine out of this stuff, but I see it. And so I saw back on September 16th of 2023, I woke up in, I was actually in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I woke up in Las Vegas in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what is happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. And I saw people in contained rooms also. And I shared that. And so, and I'm very grateful to you for putting that on Daystar when we were together. Well, what's happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. It's almost like a prophetic word to the church that he's allowing everything to come out, good and bad. Wow. Because he's coming back for a glorious church. Yes, he is. Without spot or wrinkle. And though that has been the saying, we can go to Vegas so we can hide it. But there's coming a time when God's going to hold the church accountable. Wow. And we can't just hold the world accountable. We've got to hold the church accountable for the secret hidden things. It's true. And so uh, what did you say? If it, um, what stays in Vegas, what, what happens, what happens in, in Vegas, Vegas will not stay, will in not Vegas. stay in Vegas. That's it's, right. That's what's going to, it's going to be that way for the church. Too. I think so, Joni. Yeah. I, I see that because judgment begins in the house of God. Yeah. You know what? And it's Matthew seven. If we judge ourselves, yeah, then we will not be judged. Right. In other words, it, and, it, and this is a word for so many people that if it's not about a performance, it's not about failures. It's not about what people have done right or done wrong. Yeah. It's, are you humble? Will you judge yourself now and obey the voice of God today? Yeah. We're in the time where God is resisting the proud and yeah. bringing more grace to the humble. Yeah. And That's judgment right. is the grace of God. Come on. Like people don't realize that it's the grace of God. He loves us too much to allow us to stay in this dark place. Wow. I can think of a minister that I knew that was so anointed, anointed to lead worship, anointed to teach, he actually helped me with my very first uh, album. Wow. That was so many years ago. But, um, you know, there was a secret sin in his life and he mm. knew it. And, and he knew it. He didn't repent of it. There were warnings. I could see God giving him warnings down through the years, but he would never listen to the warning. And wow. Ended up losing everything mm. and actually going to prison. And so I think that it's also wow. a word for, for, for those that are dabbling right now. Dabbling. Like they, they know, hey, this, this is not right. Uh-huh. And I'm doing this in the darkness. Yes. But God is saying, okay, either you humble yourself yeah. or I'll reveal it. Oh, I love it. And so, on, like you said, it's not going to stay in Vegas. No, it's, it's not. It's not going to stay in the dark anymore. It's not. Yeah. It's the season of exposure and transparency. I really love what you're saying because the more that we will judge ourselves, Wow. The more we throw ourselves on the altar, the mercy of God. Yeah. I believe he's just looking for people that will do that. Right. So and you know can... what, Joseph, he is, he's so loving and kind and has so much grace for those that may stumble or whatever, but then pick their self back up and say, yes. you know what, God, I'm sorry. Just like David repented. Come on, Joni. And so if, if people will do that and have the right heart, I really do believe that there are things hidden that God will allow to, um, maybe not be exposed to the world yeah. if they will get their heart right and humble themselves before him. You got like the, the, the prophetic flow on you right now. Yeah. There's an edge on this. And, and I, I, whoever's watching right now, you need to hear what Joey okay. is saying. Okay. There is a prophetic flow on you. And God is calling to the secret places in men and women's well, hearts. He's wanting you to actually speak to those men and women right now. Okay, ma'am. I'll do it right now. Yeah. Let me look right at you. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you right now. So Joni's, she's in this prophetic thing and I'm starting to see things. And the Lord is saying to you, it is not too late to repent. Yes. It is not too late to turn away from it. I see an open window for you. The window will pass, but now's the time for you to step through it. I see a man, you've been in the medical uh, field, and in this medical field, the Lord is saying unto you, he wants you to begin to turn away from that individual you've been talking to, and you know what I'm talking about. The Lord wants to draw you out of that and draw you into holiness, and it's not too late. Your children can be salvaged. Everything can be okay. God is working with you in that capacity. Minister, listen to me. Jesus loves you. He's not mad at you but he wants you to go to your highest and best. He doesn't want you limited or to hurt those around you. Now is the time to begin to have full exposure in your heart to the Lord. Get honest with the Lord. He's going to begin to heal you right now. There is strength in this word, Joe. You know, and that person that's in ministry that has gotten out of the ministry, come on, God is calling him back into it. Come on. And like you said, they've almost, they found another vocation. They're doing very well. Yep. But God is like, okay, I'm, Come on. You, you got to come back in on the team. Come on. I need you to be a part of the end time harvest. And uh, you've, that's been burning in you. In fact, 
you're not even happy. You're making a lot of money. You're doing well, but you are not happy where you are and God's oh. saying, I want you to come back and um, I want you to accept that call of God on your life because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. They're Is that without, right? Oh, they're without repentance, man, because people have that burning in them and they can run. They're like Jonah. They yeah. can run even if they're enjoying what they're running to. Yeah. It is still that burning that will be there. God yeah, wants to sure. back. For sure. Powerful. And the same thing with uh, prodigals. You yes. know, we see them coming back. Mm -hmm. We see those sons and daughters um, standing up and allowing the spirit of God to infiltrate them in a way to just move into the calling that God has. That's them. right. And so some look still look hopeless, but they're they're coming back. I mean, some of them are actually in the pig pen right now. They're rolling around in the mud, they are. but they're coming back. And so just be ready when they come back and be ready to forgive yes. and be ready to allow them back into your life, because I really believe a genuine work of the spirit is going to take place. That's right. And you know what the devil does? The devil comes along and says, oh, you don't qualify now. You, you're not good enough. You're not this. And the Lord is so not like that, but he needs you to repent so he can access the situation. Yeah, for sure. Oh. What about Israel? Is the Lord showing you anything about, I mean, the, this war is continuing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I, it's very strategic. They're surrounded. I, I mean, know. I know. And it. then the anti -ism. I know. I mean, these are all end time prophecies. These are all yes. signs of the time that we shouldn't be surprised by. We shouldn't be surprised, ma'am. I, I believe that the Lord showed me that they would march, they would go into battle. Um, I believe that, well, I'll start with this. I saw in 2020, March of 2020, I saw a prophetic word and I believe it has to do with Israel because they're a sign. We got to follow them. Mm -hmm. I saw the lion, the bear, and then Goliath was coming. So the lion, I believe is the roar, the intimidation of uh, the world's voice. The bear is the, the fear over economy and provision. Um, but then finally comes Goliath and mm -hmm. I see him standing, but the Lord showed me there would be through great sacrifice, through great cost, he would go down. Yeah. I believe we're coming to that. I believe Israel is a picture of that, that we're seeing this, this setting. And I believe it's a precursor for a real end time scenario. And I believe we're getting there. So I do see Israel coming through it. I see them getting to the other side of this. Mm -hmm. I see victory, but the church's response to Israel is very important. And I believe God is, for lack of a better word, I believe he's testing the hearts of his ecclesia. How are you going to respond to this? Are you going to go towards uh, uh, anti-Semitism? Are you going to go towards the whole narrative where they begin to say, oh no, this is not real Israel. It's the spiritual Israel that we need to be talking about. Right. And the Lord is saying, no, I have a covenant with that land. And the church right now is having a test. Yeah. What will they do with Israel? So good. You know, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn told me that yeah. he felt like the Lord showed him because of the reversal of Roe v. Wade, that, yes. that there was some grace extended Come to America. On. Yeah. Joni, that that's a good word. It is a good With word. With all the doom and gloom. <laughs> well, so 2020, I, I, you know, I, I'd only say this because it's just, I have a responsibility, but yeah. in 2020, the Lord showed me that. I wrote it on a whiteboard. In 2020, said it'd be an unprecedented ruling. Roe v. Wade would be overturning and on a federal level. And he Even said- Even though we had a president that- was not pro-life. I know. It. And yet this happens and it's during that term. Yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. And, and it's amazing because politically, the Lord said it would be an earthquake. And then Brett Baer went on the news and said, politically, this is an earthquake. <laughs> Jonathan Kahn is one of the most profound voices right now. Yeah. And, and for him to break that down, I'm listening. And I believe federally, the Lord has put grace. We've gone from a time of grace in America to a season of mercy. Yeah. And I believe what the church does with Israel, because I had a vision of an angel standing in America and the angel's name was red, white, and blue. And then there's an angel that was uh, white and blue. And however this angel responded to that angel mm. was going to be the outcome for the red, white, and blue angel. Yeah. So good. So good. Well, these are important times yes, and just thankful for the words that God's given you and others that we can see clearly and um, just continue on and not be afraid. Thank you. See, man. I think these prophetic words should give us courage. Yes. And I think they do. That's so good. Joni, I appreciate your exhortation because sometimes you do have hesitancy. Yeah. Because there's so many people that say things that are, they overreach. Right. And then you've do. got some quacks out there. There's a lot of quacks out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I know. Have to be discerning. <laughs> Help us not be a quack, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're not a quack. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Well, you do a great job leading and thank you for being a person that, that truly brings prophetic voices together, gives them a platform, and then really brings the biblical uh, right-sizing to that.
I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it and I hope you become a part of our partner family today. Have you noticed the collision of good and evil, light versus darkness? It's happening every day right in front of us. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Breaking Hell's Economy. It's a prophetic book dealing with this exact issue. What we're facing right now is a collision of kingdoms. It's the kingdom of darkness versus God's kingdom. It's the kingdom of light versus the gates of hell. And what you're seeing is this collision taking place, but we are promised that the church, the called out ones, would overcome and we would never be taken over by the gates of hell. In the times we're living in, you can see incredible, outstanding breakthrough in every area of your life. Much like the children of Israel that went through the darkness and shined as a light in Goshen in the middle of difficulty. This book is a prophetic book for you and your family to thrive in the middle of difficult times. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, and that's what we're seeing over and over again is this challenge. You've seen the Great Depression back in the 20s and 30s. You've seen wars and world wars and many things that have come against society, and this pattern repeats itself. And I'm here to tell you today, even Jesus dealt with the same issue that we're facing today when he was a child. Many people have been through this before, and the outcome determines what you believe. What you believe and what you know will bring a great outcome for you. And this book is a prophetic book that will help you navigate and break out of this present evil age. Get ready to be the light in darkness. Get ready to be the light in Goshen that God has called you to be. Breaking Hell's Economy is for you. I encourage you to order your copy today.